Okay, great. We've been getting a little more hash than before. So this is the Bardeen Oscillator Amplifier Box, um, sometimes called the Bardeen Music Box. All of our modern conveniences, cell phones, etc., ultimately trace back to this box. So Bardeen himself handled this, and it, it was considered one of his prized possessions, and he kept it in a safe in his office. Around the 1990s, it stopped playing, and now we want to restore this, to record the notes the box makes, and the song that Bardeen would play when he demonstrated the box. There's a couple of key components to this. Obviously, the most important component is the point contact transistor. There's two of those in here. One here, which is on the oscillator side of the circuit. And there's another one over here, which is on the amplifier side. The original point contact transistor on the oscillator side failed, and so we actually were able to jumper in another point contact transistor that was lent to us by Bill Bardeen, John Bardeen's son. Not, no soldering iron could be involved. It was all jumpering things in, which is why there's so many wires <laughs> going in there. Right? <laughs> We've also seen that a few of these capacitors have degraded over time. So as a consequence, with a couple of the capacitors, we're using capacitors on an outside board. Of course, the challenge we had was trying to make this work without doing any sort of desoldering of components. So basically, in circuit, trying to make this function by jumpering in components to basically get around the components that failed in the circuit. That first one seems not quite low enough. We can't, uh, so actually this, this is actually at the limit of, of what the, what it, right, right, because uh, basically if, if we take that value any lower, uh -huh. um, it ends up not oscillating. Because we were having troubles with the speaker and the amplifier circuit, we put together a separate external buffer amplifier circuit, so this is using a modern IC. And since Professor Bardeen himself didn't assemble the box, there was no schematic in the history of the box. He didn't have anything. So the first thing that we did was, that, was to create the schematic. I mean, when you're troubleshooting anything, you want to work from a schematic. So we can turn this on. Give it a second. So if you hear, there's a little bit of a hum. That high frequency oscillation is at about 30 kilohertz. That was not something that was present in the original box, but it's in part probably because we've had to uh, jumper in additional wires based upon some feedback from people that had heard the box playing before. We adjusted some of the capacitor values in order to allow the notes to be as close to the original as possible. One is uh, 2.9 okay. kilohertz. Yep. Uh, the closest button to me corresponds to the lowest frequency button um, on the box, and then each progressive button toggles, uh, again, a slightly higher frequency uh, oscillation by coupling in either a set of external capacitors if, if a capacitor in the box failed, or the actual capacitors in the box itself. So Bardeen would play the tune, How Dry I Am, when he demonstrated the box. There's actually a cheat sheet on the top of the box, so I'm going to follow that exactly. Okay. Bardeen was one of the greatest physicists of the last century. He was not a colorful figure like Einstein or Stephen Hawking, but to the average human, the impact of the transistor is far more significant than what goes on inside of a black hole. The technology change and societal change as a consequence of the discovery of the transistor and then integrated circuits 
microprocessors, big data, I mean, all of these things trace their origin to this box. If you listen, you see the difference in volume between the two.